America, New Bedford, Massachusetts. Welcome to the Paul Santos Live Show. Tonight's guests are from the Santos on Sports podcast. And to make a Super Bowl prediction, Chris Santos. From Bicycle Across America, Jim Forand. Jim Forand. Outstanding comic, Michael Keating. Michael Keating. Plus, Gary Langevin, Artie DeMello, the PSL Band. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Good evening, everybody. And me. I'm Allison Dyan, and thank you all so much for watching. Yes, And now, ladies and gentlemen, the host of our show, Paul Santos! All right, welcome to our little show. How's everybody feeling in our live studio audience? Wow. Ah, yes, I can feel it. I can feel it in the air. Yes, I can. Well, you've come to the right place. This is a place where we highlight the talented, the interesting, and the entertaining from our area. Boy, what a great show we have for you tonight. Hey, Allison, how are we doing? I'm doing great. Oh, I can tell you're in a good mood tonight. I am. Always happy to be here. <laughs> Gary Audi, how are you guys doing? Yeah. All right. Well, if you're watching live on this Monday night, type in a little comment. Say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. And we'll shoot a comment right back to you. All right, let's get caught up in the news if we could. A lot of kind of strange news items, you know. Um, there's a new app that claims to translate your dog's bark into English. Hear about this? I, I, I couldn't believe it. What a strange thing that is. So, you know, I tried it. I tried it. I got the app, and I went to my dog, Stanley, and Stanley was barking, woof, 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 and I'm recording it, woof, woof, you know. So then I wanted to play back what he was saying, you know. So I played it back, and he was like, let me out, feed me. Let me out, feed me. Let me out, feed me. <laughs> you don't want to know what my dog says. <laughs> we can say that over the air. I mean, what did people expect? The Gettysburg Address? I mean, obviously, that's what the dog's going to say. Four score and seven years ago, woof, woof. I mean, obviously, the dog wants to get fed, you know. It's a good thing I didn't try that before the dog got neutered. That would have really Ooh, been ugly. Yeah. Well, good thing you didn't try it right after he got neutered. Yeah, Where's your leg? Woof. Where's your leg? Woof. Where's your leg? Woof. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> repairs to the Washington Bridge that go into Providence are going to take longer than they said, right? Of course they are, right? You're driving into Providence, you got all that traffic and everything like that, really, really bad, so horrendous and everything. I mean, there was so much traffic the other day when I drove in, even my GPS was getting irritated. My GPS was like, turn around when possible. Turn around when possible. <laughs> I said turn around when possible. <laughs> oh, that's terrible, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that bridge is named Washington, so I'm thinking, well, it could be any Washington, but you know what? That bridge was actually named after our first president, George Washington. Oh. Problem is, they built it when he was president. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually quite insightful. <laughs> Well, anyway, while we're on the subject of transportation, I'm going to try to like ease into the next subject. I heard this on the news, right? And I had to laugh to myself. They are now saying the South Coast Rail could be ready this spring. Yeah, yeah right. Don't believe it. If you believe that, I got a Washington Bridge I can sell you. Wow. <laughs> Is that an applause break? Is that what they call that? Yeah. Well, you know, how many people, <laughs> just a little teeny, teeny weeny weeny Someone's little, been seedy weeny <laughs> little weeny <laughs> little applause break. Well, anyway, uh, how many people watch football this weekend? Yeah. Uh, oh, I know a lot of guys. I know a lot of guys who watch football. I got to tell you, as a Patriots fan, my good friend Chris Santos is here tonight. He tells me all the time, you are spoiled. And he's right. You know, at one time, we got to see the greatest quarterback of all time. Every other year in the Super Bowl. TB12. Now we're stuck with T Swift. <laughs> you a Taylor Swift fan, are you? I am. Yeah, you are. Okay, Although good. I yeah. get it. 
I'm not too swift. Get hit. <laughs> 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 Gary, not too swift. <laughs> 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 Well, anyway, I was really happy because, um, you know, my wife doesn't usually like to watch football, but my wife watched all the games with me this weekend. Aww. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, you know, this reminds me of a joke, uh, by the way, that my wife said to me the other day, you know. Do, do you want to hear it, Gary? Should I, I tell you? I, 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 no, I was thinking about cutting it out. It's an inch joke? Yeah, yeah, oh, it was my yeah. wife's uh, I was thinking. I was thinking about cutting it out, but you know. No, don't do that. All right, all right. So here's the thing. Th this really happened, right? Casey's gonna like this one. My wife made this dessert, right? The dessert is called the better than sex dessert. Oh. I'm not kidding. It, it, there's really a thing. It's called the better than sex dessert. Nice. So I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's just no way. There's just no way this can be. So I'm looking at this dessert. Jim, you with me over here? All right. I'm looking at this dessert, and I'm like, oh, it's got the frosting. It's got the chocolate. I'm thinking, wow, you know, this is a nice-looking dessert. Let me take a bite of this. So I get a nice, big scooping of this dessert, and I put it in my mouth. I'm like, oh, 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 was fantastic. So my wife walked in the room and I said, hey, honey, you're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this. I had a bite of that dessert. That damn dessert might just be better than sex. Mm. My wife said, good, you can have it on Saturday night then. <laughs> See, Ann's always got the best ones and she's not even trying. Yes. <laughs> she's just... She's just a that was the loudest applause I ever got. In the most honest one, too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was going to say better for you. How come we can't have both? You know, the dessert, too. Yeah. Right? Anyway, anyway. Hey, <laughs> I almost cut that one. I'm so glad I left oh, it in. That took a little bit of backbone to leave that in there, I'll tell you. Well, anyway, um, I don't like to start rumors here, but you see this rumor that a second market basket grocery store was going to be opening in New Bedford? That's what they said, but it turned out not to be true. Well, you know why that is? They don't have enough cops to work the front area. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the first time I went there and I saw cops up there, I'm like, what, I, we got to have a cop buy a loaf of bread? I mean, what's going on here? <laughs> hey, John, I got a good one here. I got a good one here. <laughs> Did you hear that they're bringing back the old Jerry Springer show? Yeah, they're bringing back a new version of the Jerry Springer show. Oh, thank God. But they're merging it with a family feud. It's called Family Screwed. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it doesn't really feel right. Like, I saw one of the promotional reels, and it's a little strange. Like, for example, there was a guest sitting there, and the guest said, Has my girlfriend been sleeping around? I don't know, survey says. <laughs> 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 Hey, you know, I'm looking over at the uh, the great PSL. Don't we have a great band here, the PSL band? Right. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Now, Thank you, Paul. Now, Thank you very much. Now, look, I, we're going to feature the band tonight, but I'm looking over there. I see Artie DeMello, you know. Yeah, Artie's like a really classy guy, really great guy. Look at him. Said he's a family man. He got married, raised a family and all that. But I'm going to tell you something that you didn't know about, <laughs> about Artie, right? You know, they have the I team on Channel 5. Well, we have the P team. Yeah, we're the P team. It stands for penetrate. We get right in there and find out what's yeah, going we on. Find out, the facts. find out what's going on. <laughs> no, we're anti fake news. We just penetrate the. So we penetrated right in there. We penetrate till we get to the facts. Well, I found out that Artie, back in the day, he had quite the single life. Didn't you when you were a traveling musician? You really did. Oh, yeah. yeah, you met a lot of women and stuff like that. In fact, Artie even dated a beauty queen. Imagine that. Really? really? Very oh, wait a minute. That was a booty queen. Never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Artie. Oh, it's okay. I'll get over it. I'll apologize for him, Artie. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, um, I had to bring you some bad news. Oh, no, not again. I got to bring you some bad news, Allison. I'm sorry about that. I, I want to apologize ahead of time. You folks who are, like, rolling in the aisles right now, you can, you can sit up straight and gather yourself. Wipe your eyes and everything. Wipe your eyes, you know, yeah. all, all the, the tears coming down your face. Just, you know, you can mascara, just pat right? that right down, get the mascara, you know. <laughs> I am now going to bring you the final joke of the night. The final joke. <laughs> the final joke. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. I, I, see, I see where I stand here. I, I see how it is. <laughs> no, no, I, I just want to tell you something. The mayor of Providence, Rhode Island,
decided to remove cobblestones from a historic district. Well, I think that's a bad idea because I like the cobblestones. If you like the cobblestones in New Bedford, I love the cobblestones. Yeah, I do. He decided to remove the cobblestones from a historic street. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Cobblestones. Cobblestones. That reminds me of one of Crazy Casey's exes. Betty Bedrock. <laughs> <laughs> Betty Bedrock broke up with Casey. She was hoping for a boulder, but she ended up with a pebble. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo. laughs> Instead of getting pebbled, she got stoned. Hey! <laughs> all right, we have a great show for you tonight. Everybody feeling good? All right. Oh, wow. We love the enthusiasm. We'd like to take the opportunity to thank our sponsors. How about our home base right here? J and J, no, not J and J materials. Mikey B's, Mikey, Mikey B's. B's. We're not coming to you from J and J materials, at least not tonight. J and J materials. J and J materials. Our good friend, attorney John B. Seed. Floor and order. Woo. How about our own Allison Dye and Dying for laughs? The backbone <laughs> of the show. Sure, you, you, you can milk that. It's okay. Take another bow there. There you go. All right. <laughs> How about Cisco New Bedford and our good friend Steve Silverstein? Woo! Alden Court, our other good friend Sharon Jensen. We have a new returning sponsor. Doug Glassman is back on board. Surf Pro New Bedford. And the guy that puts the lights, the camera, the action, he puts it all together every week. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. From Bristol County Media, Mr. Aaron Kaju. You uh, opened the door, Paul, for me to dump on Rhode Island, which I love to do. And you mentioned the Washington Bridge Project. And I actually saw that they are now under federal investigation. And I can't think of a more deserving thing to be investigated by the federal government. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric you right on top of it. All right, stand by. We are going to be having our first guest. Just around the corner, we get Jim Foran, Jeff Hamill, and Chris Santos all on deck tonight. We'll be right back right after this message from J&J &J Materials. In the meantime, say hello to Gary Artie. It's the PSL Band! We are joined by John Ferreira of J and J Materials out here in Rehoboth, Massachusetts. John, always good to see you. Thank you. Always good to see you too. You know, I know you've had great success here in your business. How did you get into this particular business? I bought this property and decided to open a little retail yard. You know, something small for small contractors. And the J and J came from my two kids, John and Janelle. How long have you had this business? So J and J opened in 1993. Nantucket Pavers, 1996. We manufacture and sell patio block to Home Depot in 48 states and uh, turned into a pretty huge operation as you can see. We got five stores, two in Rhode Island, three in Massachusetts and we're the largest landscape supplier in southeastern Mass in Rhode Island. We've always got good staff and over 100 employees and I've got a lot of people that have been with me over 30 years. How much inventory do you have here? So J&J &J has on pretty much at all times between five and six million dollars worth of pavers, stone, mulch, landscape supplies, masonry supplies, cultured stone for chimneys, anything you need for your home. You also have trucks coming and going all the time. Yes, oh yeah, there's trucks picking up aggregates, picking up stone, bock mulch, screen loom. You know, a lot of mason contractors come for their mason sand and their cement. So yeah, it's, it's a busy place from the bringing in the material to getting it delivered to the home to servicing and selling the customer. It's all very important. You know, if you need landscape supplies, come to J&J. &J. All right, thank you very much to J&J uh, &J Material for all of their support. Quick shout out to Cecil Sassafras, watching from the Villages in Florida. Hey, Cecil, thanks for looking in. Mike Belair is looking in. And he wants to ask a question. Why don't you just start with the last joke first? <laughs> you don't be Maybe we'll now. try that sometime. And our good friend Patty Gould is watching. Hey, Patty. Hi, Patty. Patty's a comic, and uh, Patty wants my wife to go on tour with her. 
<laughs> so that's uh, that's pretty good. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, it was a big weekend of football, and we now know who's going to be in the Super Bowl. We know it's not the Patriots, but this gentleman does a podcast with me. We call him the X's and O's guy because he knows what he's talking about. From Santos on Sports, would you please welcome Chris Santos? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to have you here today. You know, did you have a fun weekend watching all those games? Oh, I sure did. I mean, if you, if you didn't like football, I mean, th this is the weekend to be a wild card weekend yeah. before that and now the divisional championship. It was awesome to watch. Well, this weekend was all right because it was only two games. Remember that weekend where they had six games? And my wife's like, six games? There's going to be six games? <laughs> I said, well, you know. <laughs> well, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, I'm sure she thought about making that cake for you then. <laughs> You could have had that one during those three days. So she's got some extra. She can send it over in two weeks for the Super Bowl. I'll, I'll be more than happy to have some. All right. So I know some people out there are sports fans. Some are not. But, you know, the Detroit Lions, they had this, like, big lead. And the coach kept going for it on fourth down, going for it on fourth down. And he's under the gun now. A lot of people are criticizing him. What do you think? Yeah, that, I mean, that's his style of football. That's what he liked to do. And uh, he's done it all year. And that's what got him there. But uh, I think it's a little bit different when you get down to the playoffs. And you, you got to make some smarter decisions. Uh, I think it cost them in the long run. Uh, you can do those things at home. Uh, they were on the road. I think they should have kicked some field goals and put some more points on the board for themselves. And how about Patrick Mahomes right back there again in the Super Bowl? I, they didn't start out too good, but there's Kansas City again. Yeah, and people are starting to worry about, uh, is this the new GOAT of the league? <laughs> yeah, right. uh, so, you know, it's only been six years, but uh, he's got two rings and he's looking for a third. All right, so now we're watching the game, right? You're a big sports fan. You know, I, I like music, too, and all that. I know Butch is over here, one of our regular callers of Santos on Sports. Um, they keep showing Taylor Swift up in the box, you know? So I'm thinking to myself, a hardcore sports fan. Like, what does Chris Santos think? Is Chris Santos thinking, ah, I, I don't care what's going on up there. Uh, uh, you know, keep the camera on the field. Like, what do you think about all that? Well, I mean, the NFL, and she's generating a lot of money for them. Uh, <laughs> like, th I think it's $331 million dollars that she's helped out the NFL in Kansas City right now. So uh, things are going well uh, for the NFL. She's supposed to be away uh, during the Super Bowl, but they're trying to find a way where she can make it back and, uh, and be there. And, and who knows, I expect to see her at that game. I would think that she's kind of like a good luck charm so far, isn't she? Well, for them, uh, sure. And, and the way Travis has been playing, yeah. uh, you know, he had one of his best games with 11 catches over 100 yards. So, um, you know, they're winning with her there. Maybe they call it the good luck charm. Yeah, I'm watching the game, and I, I kind of like watching Mahomes. I just think he's so talented and all that. But every time he makes a pass to Kelsey, they show the box, and I see uh, Taylor Swift, oh, oh, Kelsey, oh, Kelsey, oh, Kelsey, oh. You know, and it's kind of like, okay, can we just dial it down one notch there? Uh, I don't think they have to do it as many times as they do. Uh, but, you know, that, that's what's selling right now. Uh, it's getting a lot more interested people right. who really don't watch football get entertained because now they have her involved. So I think that's why the NFL loves it. All right, now the million-dollar question, because I know you've been around, you've been a coach, you're a big fan, you're very knowledgeable on football. We always call them the X's and O's guy. San Francisco 49ers, Kansas City Chiefs, who do you like? I got to go with Kansas City still. I mean, until Mahomes uh, does something wrong, um, I think what he can brings to the table, and obviously the defense has been playing pretty good too. Brock Purdy's just a young kid. I think they'll find a way to get them. They have better players probably on the other side in San Francisco, but overall I think Mahomes – does the job, and he wins his third one. You know, they talk about the experience factor. You start to notice that after a while. Like, Kansas City seemed to play more comfortable than everybody else. Well, because, he, you know, him and Andy Reid have a good uh, connection with one another, and, and they know the scheme that they want to play, and they did a specific scheme against Baltimore the way they wanted to do it, um, thinking and dunking and getting the job done. So they relied on their defense heavily, and I expect them to do the same when they play San Francisco and win this one. All right, before we let you go, we do this podcast. It's called Santos on Sports. We've been doing it, what, a couple of years now? It's so much fun. And our next one is Thursday night, and people called up. We had, like, you know, five or six people. And uh, one day I went after Belichick, and I, I don't know if that was a mistake or not. This guy over here called up, and uh, people are calling up, like, what are you talking about, Belichick? But anyway, we have a lot of callers and stuff like that, and it's been a lot of fun. It's really grown a lot. Yeah, it's a great show. Please call uh, and, and chime in anytime you like. We'd love to have you. Uh, you know, me and Paul like to talk a lot during that show, but – when we have other people, we can, you know, have them dial in and make sure the we, we hear from the crowd. It's not just the two of us. You know, it's a lot of fun when we agree, but I've noticed that it's even more fun when we don't agree. You go on your rant, then I go on my rant, then you go on your rant, then Butch calls, then you go on your rant. You know what I mean? It's fun like that. It is, and then we have a topic every week to know what uh, people can call in on and, and give their opinion of what it is. So it's turned into a great uh, sports show. I'm, I'm enjoying it. 
I got to tell you, I agree with you on this one. I kind of like Kansas City, too. But you never know. That's why they play the game, right? Well, and look what happened in the second half with Detroit. You know, everybody yeah. thought they were ready to go shred in San Fran and they're going to go to the Super Bowl and how quickly that turned around. And I got to let the game finish all the way out. All right, Chris, Santos on Sports. Check it out on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Hey, it was a pleasure, Paul. Thanks a lot. All right, Chris Santos, ladies and gentlemen. All right. All right. Well, we got a, uh, we got a special treat for you tonight, you know. Um, we have the PSO band over here. And the PSO band, you know, they're, they're, they're really talented, you know. And uh, as people know, I'm an amateur singer. I'm just trying to learn the craft and stuff like that. So I go over there, and these guys, you know, we start horsing around and stuff like that. So I'm looking out the window. Hasn't it been dreary? The weather has been yeah. just so damn dreary, hasn't it? It's been dreary, and it's cold. I dream a lot. And, I yeah, lot. so, I, you know, like, if, if we could just go to somewhere warmer, you know. So this song kind of popped into our mind. So let's check this out. Here we go. Let's give it a shot. See if we can do it. I'm a triple threat. <laughs> All the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. I went for a walk on a winter's day. I'd be safe and warm if I was in LA. In California dreaming. On such a winter's day, I stepped into a church. I passed along the way. I got down on my knees, and I pretend to pray. You know the preacher likes it cold. He knows I'm going to stay. California dreaming on such a winter's day. I need to battle, ladies and gentlemen, on flute. Here we go. a winter's day all the leaves are brown and the sky is gray I went for a walk on a winter's day if I didn't tell her I would leave today in California dreaming on such a winter's day, 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 on such a winter's day. All right, PSL band, ladies and gentlemen. Paul Santos. Every week's the world premiere. All now, right, in all right. Defense, I arranged that about 15 minutes before coming here. Exactly. And Paul had about 15 seconds to go over it. <laughs> so I think, under the circumstances, that was one hell of a good job, sir. All right, we'll try it. We're trying. Yeah. We're trying. Well, that's the way we do it. <laughs> Here's the thing, right? You that's know, how I, we do. I've told this story a number of times, right? You know, as you're going on in life, you're like, gee, what's something I, I can try that I've never tried before? And you just have to. Do it, you know what I mean? And, and I actually have come a long way. I got a long way to go, as you can see, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So thanks to uh, Gary Hardy and the PSL band. All right, Sarah, one more time for those Thank guys. Thank you, Paul. Thank All you. All right, let's take a walk this way. It's a great honor. I'm going to take a little walk over here. And, uh, oh, wow, look who's over here, sitting in the guest seat, even though she's not a guest. She's a regular. <laughs> From Dying for Laughs, Allison Dyer. <laughs> All right, all right. So, you know, I, I, I have an ear. I can hear. Like, I, in the back of my mind, I can 
I can see Simon Cowell going, a little pitchy, a little pitchy. <laughs> it was a little pitchy, you know. But, uh, a little pitchy. <laughs> no, little pitchy. I thought that was great. <laughs> All right, we're trying, we're trying. And hey. I love that. I love the mamas and the papas. <laughs> that was a great song. I'm, I'm more like a grandpapa at this point. <laughs> and I actually am a grandpapa. Uh, anyway, so. Plus, uh, so I'm, I'm tone deaf. I wouldn't be able to tell if you were pitchy. <laughs> 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 I have no clue. It sounded well, great Wait a minute. So you think I sounded good because you're tone deaf? <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> I'm just saying right, that right, like I'm trying, I'm I trying. wouldn't notice any flaws anyway, <laughs> but it sounded great to me. I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, well, anyway, it's always great to see you. Uh, we've had kind of a, a hectic week, you know, dealing with a lot of different stuff. But uh, what about you? What kind of a week have you had since last time? Well, I got some new headshots taken. Yes. You know what yeah. a headshot is? That's a picture that people take, you know, oh. for promotional purposes, right? Way, exactly, sort of right? Yeah, I saw it. So I know all of you are following us on Facebook. You'll see my new headshot on the promos. Uh, but I hate having my picture taken. <laughs> I really do. I hate it. And I think it's because I always hated school picture day. <laughs> like that was always the most nerve-wracking day. And I don't know how they do it now, but back then it would take, like, weeks to get your photo back. And I remember when I was a kid, <laughs> you know, before before I was so self-conscious, I remember saying to my mom, I can't wait till I get my school pictures back. I can't wait. I did my hair so cute that day, and my outfit was so cute, and I can't wait to see what they're going to look like. And my mom just says to me, you know they're going to look like you, right? Like, that was her reaction. Like, you know they're just going to look like you. What are you expecting? So I don't know. I never really like having my picture taken. I also don't like all of the poses like they make you do oh during yeah, headshots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's like there's some classic ones, right? Like with men, there's always like the pulling on the collar. I don't have a collar, but yeah, there's I always like one <laughs> where the guys like. My favorite one was. <laughs> why? <laughs> my favorite one was this one. Like I used to pull like that. Yeah. Right? Why? <laughs> right? Or men a lot they'll like cross their arms. Yeah. Or comedians they'll kind of go like this. <laughs> <laughs> or the female comedians will do the one where they're giving the side eye. Oh. Why? Like, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Or a lot of female comedians do this one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I have like, seen that. That's like a super popular one. I look like a realtor in my headshot. I don't want to do any of those poses. It's just me, like, just like I'm here to sell you real estate. That's what my headshot <laughs> looks like. <laughs> but I got my hair done really cute for it. So it's like, it still looks good. But um, getting my hair done is also <laughs> nerve wracking. Because when I was in L.A., I had this really traumatic experience with a hairdresser where she was doing my hair, and then all of a sudden she pulled a hair out of my head. And I looked up at her, and she just says to me, it was gray. Eee. And I was like, yeah, but I still wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, my God. So, yeah, so that was stressful, but I, I think they it. came out good. I find it hard to believe that you got grays in there. You know, aren't you kind of like you're too young for gray, are you? Well, they're they're bleached now, so <laughs> now you can't tell. <laughs> but yeah, like, and when you like, when you're gonna go gray, going blonde is easy because it just <laughs> blends in. But yeah. yeah, they're they're up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we have a great comic that's here tonight, and we're gonna have a lot of fun with him. He's just about ready to take the stage right now. So would you please put your hands together for an uh, absolutely fantastic comedian? He is Mike Keating. Oh, thanks for coming. So now that the holiday season is over, COVID infections are trending downward. Now I have just one question. How many of you ever use COVID to get out of something you didn't want to do? Yeah. Like when somebody you can't stand comes charging at you full speed, wanting a hug, hey, bring it in. And you're like, not so fast, social distancing, please keep back 12 feet. Wait, <laughs> why do you say 12 feet when the government says six? Because jerks and losers are twice as contagious. <laughs> <laughs> so just before I left the house, I was chatting with my son. Now, I always enjoy catching up with him whenever I get the chance. I mean, I'm really proud of the way he's turned out. Happily married, two kids, nice house, great job. Now, there is a small catch. His employer has such a stellar reputation that everybody in the world is constantly hitting him up for a job. And at this point, he is like beyond fed up. I mean, you should have heard him having an absolute meltdown just a couple weeks ago. Dad, for the 10th time, I'm not going to hire you. Has <laughs> anybody in here ever worked for somebody young enough to be your son or daughter? Yep, 
first happened to me 15 years ago, and I didn't do too well with it. Of course, it didn't help that my supervisor at the time was a complete jerk, half my age, yet he's playing the experience card on me. You know, Mike, this isn't my first rodeo. No kidding, you've been riding my ass nonstop. <laughs> anyway, these days I'm mostly retired, although I have done some part-time work here and there. In fact, I was a lifeguard at a local health club, and I would usually open their pool at 5.30 in the morning. I mean, at that hour, you're dealing with type A personalities on steroids. I mean, once I was accidentally late, and immediately this irate member starts giving me a hard time. Oh, you think those five minutes don't matter? Think again, I work in Boston. Do you have any idea how much commuter traffic can change in that short amount of time? Why can't you better understand what people like us go through? And I said, well, why didn't you hire me when I sent you my resume? <laughs> yeah, that didn't go over well. He gave me a dirty look started coming toward me in a very threatening manner, and he said, Dad, don't start that again. <laughs> I used to enjoy guarding during water aerobics class, which consisted almost entirely of women in their 70s and 80s. Now, the instructor had a great playlist, which included early Beatles tunes like Twist and Shout. I mean, I am a first-generation, lifelong Beatles fan, which sounds a lot better than I'm older than dirt, but... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, whenever one of those tracks would come on, I'd get all nostalgic about the Ed Sullivan show, and I'd um, visualize the black and white footage of the girls screaming their heads off, tearing their hair, losing their minds. And I started wondering, whatever happened to those girls? And then it dawned on me. They're in the pool taking the class. Well, one thing I didn't like about that job was enforcing rules. People do not like to be told what to do. For instance, everyone must shower before getting in the pool. Now, you wouldn't believe some of the pushback I would get, like, I don't want to get wet. <laughs> Think about that one in a minute. Or I showered at home. Yeah, when was that? Like two hours ago? And what happened after that? You covered your body with an entire bottle of that hideous perfume that we can all smell from the other end of the parking lot. But by all means, please enlighten me as to how you are so squeaky clean that Board of Health regulations shouldn't apply to you. I'm listening. Well, not really, but whatever. <laughs> so, you know, I, at one point I began to wonder, well, maybe it isn't me. It isn't all them. It could be me, too. I mean, corporate America and I have never gotten along. I mean, even going back to college, when a company made me take a polygraph, they were legal then. And it was so humiliating, because first I had to sit down and fill out a long questionnaire covering things like drug usage, job history. Then they hooked me up to the machine and started asking those accusing questions like, are you being truthful with us about your drug usage? Are you telling us everything about your job history? Are you out of your stinking mind applying here? Yep. Now, how is that fair? Can I hook them up to the machine? Is the salary you're offering all you can afford? <laughs> Will I really get that promotion in six months? Is your boss a doofus like you? Hey, no doofuses, losers, or jerks in this audience. You've been great. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> Mike Keating. Hey, Mike. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure to be here. You came down from Worcester. Yeah, Worcester, W-O-O-S-T-A-H. <laughs> and you're from that area, right? Um, originally from Framingham. Yeah, it's around the same area. Though. Yeah, 20 <laughs> miles apart, you know, which compared to here is like right next door. You know. Yeah, when we look up there, we go, yeah, yeah, up there somewhere, you know, something yeah. like that. <laughs> so tell me about your comedy, right? When did you start doing comedy? Um, before my retirement, you know, about 15 years ago, I was... A company had a talent show, so I got up on stage, <laughs> roasted upper management, <laughs> thought I wouldn't have a job, but they actually loved it. So I, after that, I did a set at the winter party that my running club has every year. And then after that, I took a comedy course, and things just kind of took off from there. Gee, that's fantastic. Good for yeah. you. Good for you. Well, I got to ask you a question, right? Roasting the bosses, right? You went up there and roasted them, right? So whatever made you want to do that? Because that sounds to me like, wow, that may not be a, a good thing to do. It may be dangerous, you know? 
Yeah, uh, my first joke you had was really dangerous. Oh, do you remember what it was? Yep. So I got to set it up first. The boss, uh, the high-ranking manager, had a talent for creatively stating the truth. In other words, he was a bull artist. <laughs> and so one day he had to, he had a swivel chair in his office, and he got rid of it because the arms were not movable, and he couldn't swivel the chair because they'd get in the way of the desk. And I thought, okay, that's typical. He does not want to be involved with anything he can't spin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my first joke. And then you went from there? That's right. And it got worse, right? As you went along, you started taking shots at this guy and that guy. and they're like I took shots of them, but I, I, the other jokes were okay, but they weren't as good because they were just stock jokes you'd get out of a joke book with their names dropped in. <laughs> you know. But hey, you got to start somewhere. No, no, I know exactly. I know exactly. So, uh, do you dra travel around a little bit? Do you like to appear in, you know, comedy clubs? Do you play like, you know, uh, events and things like that? Like, what's your plan going forward? Oh, I get. Sometimes I do charity events. Other times I get feature shows. You know, this is my first time doing a TV show. Hopefully, not my last. But you know. <laughs> this is also a charity show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's the donor and who's the beneficiary? That's what I want to know. Uh, bend over Barboza down the street. Uh, no, never mind. Hey! <laughs> well, anyway, so you had a day job and you kind of retired from that? Yeah, well, I got forcibly retired. My job was, you know, made redundant, you know, position cut, well, however, however you want to say it. You know, the result was I was out of work. You know. I see. Yeah. Do you ever think about doing this like full time? Because you know you got some good material there, and I know you've been working hard on it. Yeah, I mean it. M it might happen. I mean, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I see what the full timers go through, and you know there are some parts of it that I could do without. You know. Oh, it's tough. Yeah, yeah. Right? it's a real grind and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, like myself, uh, you heard me joking about my wife coming up with all this good material and stuff. Yeah. I do have a wife and kids and all that. I do have a wife, two kids, and four grandchildren. Ah, isn't that great? That's <laughs> awesome. I got one grandson so far, Sam Santos. He's fantastic. Yeah. So we're looking forward to more down the road. Right. But uh, what's that like? Does your wife ever, like my wife, does she ever give you material when you're talking to her and stuff like that? Uh, <laughs> no, she. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. Really? Know. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, my wife has a gift. I, I yeah. got I got a list of like I'm gonna say like seven or eight things that actually happened that she said, and I'm like, yeah, can I use that? No, no, don't use that one. Yeah. <laughs> don't use that one. <laughs> but it's all good stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, in fact, uh, th there was one, this actually happened too, I think I put this in a monologue, there were leaves on the on the deck, you know? Yeah. So she's like, what are you going to do about these leaves? I said, well, you know, I got a bad back, I got rheumatoid arthritis, I got bursitis, I got all this stuff. I said, I, I, ca I can't be, I can't be sweeping away, <laughs> you know, these leaves. So then I said to her, I said, whatever happened to that thing that blows air? She goes, I'm looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> So sometimes the things that really happen, you know, those are the funniest things. Oh, yes. <laughs> Where do you get your in between? Do you like to sit down and write, or do you kind of make observations and stuff like that? Uh, sometimes <laughs> something <laughs> just hits me, and, you know. And you I go with it. Yep. Yeah, you go with it. Yep. All right. Well, hey, I, we really appreciate you stopping by. I know it's a little bit of a, a drive down. What was that, 495? Yep. You didn't have to go over the Washington Bridge, so that's good. No, no, I, we didn't have to go over the Washington Bridge. Yeah. Uh, and 495 is no picnic either. Uh, tonight it was, tonight luckily, it was? but that's rare. You didn't have your GPS yelling at you tonight? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my GPS was able to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mike, thanks again. Thanks. Mike Keating, ladies and gentlemen. All right, stand by. More to come on the Paul Santos Live Show, live from Mikey B's. We'll be right back.
Shout out to uh, Jackie Gula looking in tonight. Thank you very much. Bruce Sear. Big hello to Bruce Sear. And of course, the night would not be complete without Gary's favorite. From London, England, Andrea Ryan. Andrea, I'd like to say, I'm going to miss you. I'm going to back you up for sure. I'm going to see you next week. Love you. Somebody wanted to know if that flute that Artie was playing, is that a piccolo? No. It's just a flute. flute. A the regular flute. Small flute. You yeah. like the small flute? Yeah, you get the small flute. Yeah. Very small. Very small. You've been playing that flute for a long time, haven't you? The piccolo his whole life. <laughs> and a shout out to, um, let's see, Bridgeport, Connecticut, Steve Freeman. Thanks for looking in tonight. Lynn Marie, yes, Lynn Marie. Thank you very much for poking your head in tonight. We really, really appreciate that. And the other Lynn Marie, Lynn Marie Scrivano from Niagara Falls, New York. Thank you for looking in. Sorry about the Buffalo Bills. I really am. <laughs> Buffalo Bills, they always blow it in the end. All right, this gentleman rode a bike. Now, he didn't ride a bike like around the neighborhood. He didn't ride a bike down a Kushnet Avenue. He didn't ride a bike into a Kushnet. He rode a bike all the way across America. Can you believe that? All the way across America. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you put your hands together for Mr. Jim Forand? <laughs> you, you even walk like you're on a bicycle. I feel like I was born on a bicycle. <laughs> All right, well, welcome aboard. Uh, I, I can't believe this. You got on a bicycle, and you rode from here all the way to California, right? Isn't that unbelievable? Yes, I did. Wow, let's hear it for Jim. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> and you ended up you know, raising money for a good cause. Why don't you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, I, I raised money for uh, Three Hearts Farm. Uh, they have an a organization, Nathan Hale Foundation, it benefits the local veterans, and we raised over twenty thousand dollars for them. Well, I'm looking at you, you know, and you and I are around the same age, believe it or not. And Gary, I think he's in a little bit better shape than I am. You think? <laughs> I bet no. you he doesn't have a grabber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I drop something on the ground, I have a reacher, and I yeah. I pick it up with my little grabber. Meanwhile, this this guy's riding his bicycle to California. Yeah, he's yeah. happy. So, I mean, no. so it's a little a little bit different. You, you know, you're in a little bit better shape. How is it that somebody like yourself, you're in your, your early 60s like me, you're able to ride a bicycle that far? Well, it started a few years back, and uh, I became like a fanatic pedaling 10 to 12,000 miles a year for the last five years. And I kept thinking about riding across the country, but I would put it off till the next year, the next year. Finally, I just said, I'm not in any better shape than I am now, so I'm going to go for it, and the rest is history. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Now, what route did you take? I mean, you left New Bedford? I actually left Plymouth, Massachusetts. Okay. And uh, there's a, a GPS app called Bike Map, <laughs> and you can plug in if you want to take the fastest route, if you want to take bike paths and less traveled roads type of thing. You can even put if you're on a mountain bike and wanted to go all dirt roads, uh, primarily dirt roads. But that's the app I used, and it was fantastic. I, I highly recommend anybody who's remotely thinking of doing anything like that <laughs> to go for it because it was the best six weeks of my life. All right, fantastic, fantastic. So now, there's various routes you can take. Obviously, you live in Plymouth, Massachusetts, America's hometown, right? And you were telling me before, instead of like going like straight across, you actually went south, right? You went kind of well, through the warmer climates. Is that what that was? No, I pretty much went uh, west right from Plymouth. Uh, I went through Providence, okay. got into uh, almost Hartford. Uh, Manchester, Connecticut was my first stop. And let me just touch on that. <coughs> the first day was the worst because we had a tornado warning and I got drenched three different times getting to Manchester, Connecticut. And I just was like, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> <coughs> but believe it or not, that was the worst weather day of the whole trip. Right, but didn't you go through some of those southern states on the way to California? Uh, no, I... I <laughs> <laughs> Information from, man. <laughs> I, I asked about about ten minutes ago. Uh, I, I did go into I did go into uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, where my niece lives, because I was so far ahead of schedule 
My wife says, you can't beat me to Huntington Beach where we're going to meet. Mm. She says, we're having like a welcoming party there. Yeah. So I, I said, well, I'll have to slow down. I, I went into Scottsdale, Arizona, where our niece lives, and I spent four days there just R&R &R and nice. jumping in the pool and all that good stuff. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty much a westerly route right straight across because I, I chose the fastest route, and I didn't know how long it was going to take me, but uh, for 26, the first 26 days, I averaged 122 miles a day. Wow. And... Uh, <laughs> How long did it take you to get there? 31 days. Wow, a month. Wow, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, 3,800 miles. I, I know you're going west and everything, but... <laughs> Let it go, man. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. No, but Arizona, right? Uh, Arizona is like you kind of have to go down yeah, ish, before you go. Yeah, ish. So isn't, isn't that down? Isn't so that Paul's south? Paul's question is going to be, so what was it like to get a unicycle <laughs> all the way across the country? It's not like he went through Chicago. Was you know, he went unicycle? south. Didn't is I, it, is I it? actually got passed by a uh, unicycle. And... <laughs> And, How did you know, you know that? The bike, the bike was, the, my bicycle was loaded up with a lot of weight, and I was tired, and I'm trying to catch up to the unicycle, trying to catch up to the unicycle. Finally, he had a, a red light. I caught up to him. He goes, how come you couldn't keep up? I said, I'm too tired. Ah, uh, get it? Is it two tires, Paul? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> yes, I, I was on Route 66 for oh. a portion. Uh, did you get through, kicks? Yes, I did. Uh, New Mexico was fabulous for Route 66. Wait a minute, New Mexico? Yes. <laughs> His geography might be a little bit off, Paul. No, Paul, I was, I was in, I was in yeah. New Mexico. Isn't that another southern state? Yeah, well, he's going with his geography. He's the one who took the trip. <laughs> but uh, my, sure route, my route wasn't through su southern states until the, almost the end. Oh, right at the end. Yeah, kinda. I avoided the Rocky Mountains, and, uh, and I went through uh, Albuquerque, Gallup, New Mexico, and then into Arizona. Nice, nice. Ariz right at that border, New Mexico, Arizona, is probably the highlight of, I was doing live Facebook videos, and uh, there was a, a herd of uh, wild horses. There was probably 15 to 20 of them, and I bicycled right in between them. They were afraid of my bicycle, and they were running on both sides of the street as I was pedaling right down the middle. Wow. Did a fantastic video. Wow, wow. what was that like? Excellent. I, I was just like, I'm not in Plymouth anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and the other highlight of my trip was my daughter, KJ, who's in the audience. She did a kind of a surprise visit when I was getting into Colorado. She had a week off between jobs, and she flew into Denver and rented a car. And I shared my location with her via the cell phones. And it was so funny to have her find me out in the middle of this <laughs> corral type of thing, dirt road, and she's behind me, and I'm like, I was just shocked. It was just, yeah, that's great. it was just so filled with memories, and like I said, I recommend it for anybody, not just pedaling across the country, but if you've been putting something off for so long, just find out what it takes to do it and do it, because absolutely, this was absolutely. fabulous. <laughs> Even if it's singing, right? It's singing, exactly. It's singing. They make earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see you fit right into the show here. Right, yes. in, right in, baby. Right in. in fact, I'd like to become a regular. <laughs> I think we're going to arrange that. Yeah, we're going to arrange We're always, we're always adding on, you know? Yeah. yeah. You could be the bicycle guy. Yeah. Sure. What are we going to do with the bicycle guy? No, what I want to uh, know is how the unicycle guy get to California before you did. Uh, steroids. There you go. <laughs> there, there is a little story there too. Um, I, uh, I did a, another live Facebook video about uh, uh, SPDs, uh, uh, PS, PSTs, performance enhancing drug. PSL. PEDs, performance enhancing drugs. Ah. And uh, when people found out I got to Arizona in 26 days, they were, you know, talking about, hey, what is this guy on? So I go, I started a live video with, yes, I am on PEDs. And I reached into this box, and I pull out a donut. And I said, it's a performance-enhancing donut. And I took a nice big bite. There you go. There you and, go. Uh, I, had, I, had a, I had a friend meet me in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and he actually had a T-shirt made up with PEDs and donuts all over the shirt. That's it right. was fabulous. Yeah. So it was great. That's kind of warm down there, isn't it, in Arizona? 
Uh, well, the funny thing is, every 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 city I got to, every city I got to along the way, they said, "Good thing you weren't here a couple weeks ago." It was like 115 degrees. Yeah, yeah. I was there. It was in the 90s, so it was much more bearable. You know, those southern states, they can get a little warm. Yeah, those saying? southern states. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's a warm heat. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have anything else? I mean, that's such a. Gr <laughs> oh, what did I say? It was a warm heat. <laughs> I just, I can't, I can't. This is the best show we've ever had. I, I am on PED, <laughs> exactly. You are, you are the PED. You should try it sometime. Performance enhancing. <laughs> uh, die. Yeah. <laughs> die. No, anyway. So, now, you did this great accomplishment, riding your bike across America. I mean, obviously, it's going to be difficult to top that, but do you have something else on the agenda that you like to do? Well, uh, Labor Day this year, I plan on pedaling to Florida to see friends. Oh. And my wife will fly down and... You're going to go south? Yes, definitely go south. <laughs> you can go the long way. You can go all the way up and then all the way back around. I could take the long way and go through Canada. <laughs> yeah, I could go through New Mexico you and come around. You're going to pontoons for the bike, though. <laughs> Well, anyway, you wanted to uh, plug this business right here. I see you're wearing this Yeah, shirt. I did have a sponsor. Uh, our son owns Pilgrim Pest Professionals, and he sponsored the ride. He got me jerseys and retrofitted the bicycle with everything I needed. Uh, one particular story, I got into uh, Arizona, and the bike was starting to show a little wear. The tires were worn. The brakes were worn. And I just went into this bike shop, and I told him what it needed. And he goes, oh, yeah, we're going to replace the brake pads, the tires, this and that. He goes, come back in a couple hours. There's a coffee shop right down the street. So I, I walked over there and had a coffee and some PEDs. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when I came back, the owner of the bike shop says, wow, it must be nice to, to have people following you. I go, what do you mean? He goes, your bill is all paid. My son was, I showed, was sharing my location with my son as well, and he knew where I was, so he called the bike shop and paid the bill. Hey, that's so fantastic. it was fabulous, fabulous. Hey, Jim, well, that's a great story. I'm so glad that we were able to catch up with you on social media and that you were able to come by the show. We really appreciate Excellent. it. Great story, great cause. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, me. now don't go anywhere just yet. We have this great band over here. It's called the Paul Santos Live Band. How many people have their own band? Not too many, right? Not too many. Not too you ready many. to go? You know, we were going to highlight the band tonight. You came on the right night because, you know, they play these little bridges in between, but we wanted to put the spotlight on them. So they're going to do a performance for us right now. You ready to go? Yeah, this is going to be, and uh, I just changed what I was going to do. You changed it? Just, just now I did because, well, the bike and the tornado, yeah. I'm like, you know, the Wizard of Oz, so I'll do a little over the rainbow. I'll do that. Don't don't go south on me here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you did. You went over the rainbow. You went down south. You went around. You know, I ladies and gentlemen, Gary Landry and Artie Demello, the Paul Santos Live Show Band. Here they are. Thanks, thanks to Jim for being here tonight. Thank you. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. Over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams that you dare dream, they really do come true. Someday I wish. Upon a star, wake up when the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops, way up up those chimney tops, that's where. Blue birds 
fly. Birds fly well over the rainbow. Why then, oh, why can't I? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Arthur DeMello. Arthur DeMello, everybody, give him a round of applause. Someday I wish upon a star Wake up where the clouds are far behind me Where troubles melt like a lemon drop Way above those chimney tops That's where you'll find the PSL band. Thank All right. You, I thank you. Artie thanks you. Quick shout out to Peter Chase out there in Dartmouth. Thank you very much for looking in tonight. And Bruce Sear asked the question. I had a high school teacher named Ray Forand. Is it anything to Jim Forand? Actually, it is. It's a cousin. So a uh, great Forand family. I know a lot of police officers in the Forand family, which I knew. So that is a relation right there. And uh, Patty Gould says that is one of her favorite songs. So oh. good selection right there by Gary and Artie. Well, glad we could accommodate Patty. All right, well, we're uh, just about ready to wind things down here on the Paul Santos Live Show, and uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think I hear something. Anybody hear that noise back there? What, wait a minute, what's, what's going on over here? Oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, Crazy Casey! <laughs> they're, playing, they're playing shark music. <laughs> you know, like we're about to be attacked. Run for your lives. Nobody does wonderful world like he does. How do you know? I just listened to it. I was sleeping back there. Yeah, you were sleeping because it was over the rainbow, but thank you for the compliment. Anyway. You know what I mean, baby? That's the wrong song. You're thinking about, <laughs> it's a wonderful world. It's, it's a different south. song. Yeah, I listened to you sing already once tonight. That's enough. <laughs> hey, listen, though. I got to tell you, though. I, 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 I really like that whole thing you did about the... Sex cake. What? Oh, the better than sex cake, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I want you to know I met your wife at Hawthorne Country Club today. Hawthorne Country Club? Oh, no. Uh, oh. Hawthorne Medical Center. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what insurance you have, yeah, I think. There goes, my, there goes my imagination and the effects of two drinks. Two drinks? Yeah, but she gave me the whole recipe. 
Oh, in that cake, the better than sex yeah, cake? Better than sex, the whole recipe. Layer in a tri triple bowl or a trifle bowl. Everything in my life is trifle. Truffle. And Ann Margaret, enjoy. And she said, you're invited to come over for try the cake anytime you'd like. Ooh. Ooh but to compare, wow. right? Well, I want to compare the cake, though. Wow, very, very nice. Very nice of her. Yeah. Well, and I want to say, Mike, by the way, Mike, it was nice meeting somebody else that comes out and admits they're retarded right away, too. I'm retarded. I've been retired, retarded. you mean, right? Retired. retired. Oh, well, it's it, look, at my age, <coughs> spelling doesn't count. <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to use that word anymore. Do you know that? What's that? <laughs> that word that you said <laughs> for somebody that's not quite, you know. Crazy? <laughs> Well, you call me crazy all the time. Rerouted. <laughs> yeah, but that's your nickname, Crazy Casey. Yeah, well, I got to tell you, uh, everybody at Alden Court said they're going <laughs> to miss you. They ripped down the Bob Baca sign. Oh. And <laughs> they just put a big picture of you. It makes me sick. Wait a minute, you'd rather have Bob Baca up there than me? No, it's just that I... I, could, I had a lot easier time looking at him than him when I'm eating uh, pancakes in the morning with grits. So I eat in my room now. By the way, next week, I know you're, I know, don't laugh. It's not that funny. <laughs> I can't help it. It's called filling time. And by the way, Adi, how come in the last hour your instrument grew so big? <laughs> And curved, wow. Depends where I am. Well, for a, w for a moment I thought you were a flautist and I was going to disassociate myself from you. <laughs> Is the correct word flutist or flautist? Both. I thought so. It goes both ways. Yeah, well, I don't use it. <laughs> That's why I said that. <laughs> hey, you got on two weeks in a row. It's pretty good, huh? Well, you know what? That's because I don't swear. Anymore. They put me on a special medication. <laughs> it's the anti-curse yeah. medication. I, I, they give me this little medication. I don't swear. I don't say anything bad anymore. I, don't, I shut my mouth and I just stick right to what I'm doing. It's called a Viagra. <laughs> Is it hard to get used to, though? You know what? There's a big difference between concentration and concentrated. Oh, Someday you're going to learn about it, too. Concentration and constipation. Now, yeah, well, yeah, but it, don't say that word around a nursing home. Yeah, a little either one, right? Oh, I'll tell you what. But by the way, yeah. while you're gone, I just want to let you know, uh, I don't know if you're taking them on your cruise with you or anything, but uh, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. He's like, the wife's lucky. She's, he's taking her. Yeah. Right now, uh, did you have to pay your own way? I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, Gary uh, had a suggestion that I thought would be nice. Yeah. And you're uh, at Alden Court. They need a, you can't be waiting three weeks. They need to see you. So I'm going to ask you if it's, have your permission, because I can borrow one of your cheap suits. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to do a, it's going to be an impersonation of the Paul Santos show. Yeah. It's going to be called, uh, and if you could play an Adi, bring your flute or flout or whatever the hell it is. I'll try. I'll try to stay dressed and not do anything nude or rude. Oh, yeah. But if we do, I'm gonna, it's going to be a kind of a remake of you. Pee Wee Herman Live. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Crazy Casey. I hope you have a wonderful vacation. Yeah, thank you very much. We love that guy. All right, we'd like to take the opportunity to thank our guests. Hey, how about from Santos on Sports, Chris Santo? All right. We'd also like to thank uh, terrific comic Mike Keating. There he is right there. And how about the gentleman who rode his bicycle across America, Mr. Jim Foran? All right, we're going to be off the next couple of weeks. We're going away. We're going to find some warmer weather. And then we're going to come back. We're going to be right back here at Mikey B's. We hope you'll join us then. I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank our comedy director, Allison Dian. And how about Gary Artie, the best band in all the land, the Paul Santos Live Band right there. Bon voyage, Paul. Bon voyage. I'm Paul Santos. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to laugh. And have a great night, everybody.